Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're in another camp, ready to do another walkthrough. This one's an X26 camp. So a little over 19 foot as far as living space, a little more compact, a um, little different color combination. So you're gonna wanna stick with us as we walk around this one and give you the tour. We will spend a little time outside today. The weather's somewhat nice, still a little cold, but We'll go around the exterior, show you what's going on with it, and then we'll bring you back for the interior and we'll go through this one. So stay with us. So you can see we're starting to dry out. Still a little muddy down here, but this is the camp that we're gonna do the walk around. So like I said in the intro, this is an X26. So for those of you that have asked in the comments as far as dimensions and stuff, this one would be just over 19 feet long and then an eight foot interior. So 102 inches exterior, which would be legal width. And then you're about 11 and a half feet to the top of the stack. Um, or in this case where they've got the air conditioner, you'd be to the top of the air conditioner. Now, with that being said, like I say, this one's an X26 and it weighs in right at um, about 8,460. So not the lightest camp we do, but not the heaviest either. Kind of falls right in between. Um, you can get some down around seven um, high sixes but this one's a good size as far as fitting things inside this one does have the recliners and stuff in there so even in this smaller camp we still can do a lot of cool things with some layouts and still make them usable we do get a lot of a lot of questions about how small of a camp can we build well we can build a really small camp but if this camp is going to last you a lifetime and be handed down from generation to generation we obviously want something that's usable and so just because we can put all that stuff in it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be usable so we're going to look at it you know you can come with your ideas and stuff and we can bounce some things around because in the end we want you to be happy with the camp so as you can see, this one's got the wainscot down the sides, um, diamond plate. It does have the 7,200 pound axles um, with the 14 ply tires. These are an eight lug wheel, 16 inch wheel. They did the heated tanks in this one with the exception of the heating elements on them. So no heating elements on this one, just basically relying on the furnace um and that insulation to heat them tanks this one if you've watched the last two previous videos i talked to you a little bit about our circulation system to where we can utilize the wood stove this camp does have that as well you've got your stabilizer jacks on all four corners your spare tire and it's got the same size so you've got your um, stabilizer jacks this has the same um, size wrench as far as lowering that down so you can use your stabilizer jack handles um, or there's a quick connect that you can hook up to your drill and lower those down you've got your six gallon propane water heater this feeds through to your inside wood box so you can store all your wood out here got the outside shower this little thing here is just for the fresh air intake. I have had quite a few questions about that also as far as where our wood stove gets its fresh air. Um, we can pull from inside the camp, but as tight as the camps are sealed up, you end up starving that fire for oxygen. So we draw all of our combustible air from the outside. This would be your exhaust fan for your bathroom your frosted sliding window in the bathroom. 
And this one just has storage. Um, this would be where you would do like camp shafts, anything like that way. We plumb all of our camps to where if you wanted to add that in the future, you surely can. A little outside cooking light. Set up for antennas, satellite, all that stuff. If you were to do any of that stuff, your fresh water storage is in this back compartment with your water pump, very easy to access. Um, your fresh water stuff as far as winterization's in there. So a winterization tube to where you can put your antifreeze and just pump it straight in. 200 watt solar panels, those come standard. This is an egress window, so pops right out to where if you had to, you can get out of it. Your receiver hitch with a seven way plug, all DOT compliant as far as lights and everything that way. Then you've got your battery storage on this side. So four, six volt AGM batteries battery disconnect this is our solar controller so it'll take you through everything that your batteries are doing it's showing our batteries are 100 percent right now it'll tell us what they're putting into the batteries what's being pulled out of the batteries what our battery levels are all sorts of things so Got your furnace. This would be for all your water fill stuff, your city water hookups to where if you were at campgrounds or anything, it is set up for all of that. Your electrical cord, this is a 25 foot cord so you can stretch it out, 30 amp service. All your wastegate stuff down below. This one does have the, which all of our wagons or tandem style camps have these removable grates to where you can keep storage, tire chocks, handles, whatever in here that you're not worried about sitting in the elements. So it kind of keeps them out of your enclosed storage. Two seven gallon, 30 pound propane tanks, bully dog hitch, heavy duty tow chains, our breakaway. We got the adjustable coupler here, so you can really fine tune your ride, whether you do the equalizer hitches or whether you're just gonna pull it off your ball. Um, they pull super, we get that ass out a lot as well. Um, and I think I've mentioned in, in a previous videos that each of our camps are designed for their frames. So we take all the weight and everything into consideration when we build these to where all of our camps pull super. So you've got your broom holder. I don't have the broom on this one yet. Split Dutch door. It's got a latch to where it can keep that open. You can regulate temperature and everything this way. It does have the sliding window to where most of the time if you're trying to keep insects and stuff out, that's a good way to do it. But kind of cool. But I guess that brings us to the inside. So we'll go ahead and walk in here and show you what we got going on. All right, so as I said, we're a little over 19 feet as far as living space in here, eight foot wide. And then I'll go through the colors with you. So this is a tan soapstone on the wall. The cabinetry is a Colombian walnut. You've got dockside pier flooring. And then this is a winter carnival countertop. A 
way pretty combination. The dark wood is beautiful. It, it turns out really good. I think you match that with these lighter color walls um, and it just makes it pop, but looks way good. So we'll go ahead and get started up here in the front. Like I say, this is a smaller camp, um, but it's not like it lacks a lot um, in space. Very usable, like I said, on the exterior. We want to make sure that it's as usable as we can make it. Um, obviously, there's a reason a lot of you pick these smaller camps. You maybe want it to where you can get it in places. You know, maybe weight's a factor. Some of those things. But we just want to make sure that it's as usable as we can. So, still everything is good sized here. Got a good sized closet. Lighted closet. Plenty of storage in the drawers below. Got two of them. This one does have the elevated fridge in it. Keeps it up off the ground so you don't have to bend down, and get stuff out of the bottom. They didn't do the microwave up top, so this is just storage up here, which it is wired to where if they do want to put a microwave in it, they can easily do so. Stainless steel fridge freezer combo, two way, so propane and electric. Our monitoring system with our pump, water heater, and then this is that circulation unit that we talked about in previous videos that allows us to utilize the heat from the wood stove to circulate it through the camp because, and maybe I'll just cover this for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about. So right now we've got the wood stove going, but if I come over to my thermostat for my furnace, it's turned on. You can see, maybe you can see if I can get it to focus. Maybe it won't focus. But anyways, it's satisfied. So the furnace isn't gonna kick on, isn't going to cycle air through anything. And so the wood stove, that's primarily what you're gonna use in the winter. At least that's what I'm going to use. Some of you might use the furnace. So in this camp situation where it doesn't have the electric heating elements on the holding tanks, you're relying solely on the furnace to heat those tanks. But if you're not using the furnace, that's very hard to do. So what we've got going on in this one is we can turn this switch on and it runs a circulation fan that pumps warm air from inside the camp all throughout the camp. It keeps it evenly distributed because like this bathroom, for example, where it's closed off, from everything else, it's gonna be kind of cold in there even with the wood stove burning. So we wanna be able to capitalize on that heat. So that's what that switch is, is for that circulation. These other switches, like I say, water pump, your monitoring panel, and your water heater. And then we've got AC switches throughout. Lots of overhead storage. We'll have gas struts on them, soft close hinges. Does have the propane light in here. And then we've got a three burner cooktop with a row of drawers below it. This on the bottom would be our converter with our fuse panel as well as our breakers. This one does have the pull out countertop, which has kind of been a, a pretty popular option. Um, seems like a lot of camps were doing the, the pull out in it. And then it's got big open areas underneath to where they can put bar stools or whatever um, they're planning on using as far as that goes. You've got your reclining sofas sitting straight across from your wood stove. Nice big headboard bookshelf. This is a queen size mattress in the lower. And then this one would be the equivalent of a twin XL. Lots of storage though in these bookshelves. This bottom one does lift up and there's storage below there so kind of a little hidden storage area if you want to keep some things there 
you got more drawers below. And then we've got the little entertainment center to where, like I said, on the exterior, it is wired for TV, um, antennas, all of that stuff. So they can run all of that stuff. And then lots of drawer space in here. It does have the fantastic fan, rosewood trim. And these are 36 inch windows here. So two 36 inch windows on both sides. This one's got two on this side. So one over the countertop, one over the recliner. The one over the recliner is actually a 48. And then your egress window in the back. We have our wood burning stove. I don't have any of the dampers closed on it, so it's really cooking, putting out some heat. Angled overhead cabinet there. Deep single stainless steel sink. You can see I've got my tip out stuff in here. I don't have this one quite finished up. This will have tip out drawers there to keep utensils or whatever in and then big storage drawers down below it. And then the bathroom. Has your mirrored medicine cabinet, your exhaust fan, no vanity in this one, which like I said, in these smaller camps, if you can utilize the space better, this bathroom's probably just as spacious as one of the bigger camps as far as room um, to work around and stuff in there. So depending on how you want to set yours up, um, there's some options that can work for you. This one does have the bigger shower, um, the 32 inch shower pan, stainless steel, glass door. but really spacious bathroom for this size camp. And like I say, it just comes down to how you're going to utilize that space to the best. That's a look at this camp. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, would love to hear what your thoughts are on the camp. Um, maybe what you'd like to see in yours, some changes, whatever. Um, I love reading the comments and, and seeing what you think of these things. So. Anyways, if you haven't liked, subscribed, please do so. Helps our channel grow, helps us get the product out there. We feel that everyone deserves something that's built with quality. In a day and age where things are replaceable, um, we know how hard you work for your money. So we want to provide a quality product that you can be happy with. So anyways, thanks for watching.